In today's video, we're going to be trimming out uh, the doorway here and the doorway on this side of the dining room. And I'm going to show you how I install that casing, some tips, some tricks. I'm also going to show you how I made the door jams for that so that you can have a neat way to put the trim on uh, the dining room. Other than that, once I get the casings on and the baseboard around will be completely done. You can see I have the coffered ceiling all done and sprayed. I didn't film that because it's exactly the same coffered ceiling that I did in a client's uh, home in the basement where I actually stained it black and sprayed it with a clear finish. Uh, you've seen those videos before. Now I'm up to the casing. So let's get started with the casing and I'll tell you all about it. Really quick rundown before we get started. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I install this casing. I have another one here already made up for the door in the background behind me. You see a bunch of shims sticking out. I'll explain all that. Uh, in short, let's, uh, I'll give you a really quick rundown of how this goes. So the way I do it is the, you never want to install your jam casing right on top of the sheetrock because there's variables in the sheetrock. You have all these uh, waves and dents and dings and corners that are not straight, not flat, nothing's plumb. Uh, when they do sheetrock, it, it's kind of rough work, you know what I mean? So you want to eliminate the process of having to worry about having those uh, variations of the wall and bends and everything. So what I like to do is stay at least a quarter of an inch off of any of the walls and then put the shims in the spaces as I nail it on so that I'm keeping everything uh, plumb and level and it looks nice and neat. Once the casing goes on, this thing is going to be nice and squared off and straight. So the way I go about doing this is the header of the jam, the top, you always want that supported by the legs. Okay, so these will be the legs of the jam. With this top of the jam right here, this is a three-quarter material, so I know that I want to stay a quarter of an inch off of the top. So uh, what I do is, well, first of all, I'll measure the width. So I get the width so that I can cut the top piece because I also want to stay a quarter of an inch off of both of the ends. So I'll measure the width of the, the rough opening and I have say 72. So a quarter of an inch from that side, quarter of an inch from that side, that equals a half an inch. So I have 72 and I take away a half an inch, then it's 71 and a half inches. That's the width of the header of the door jam. Then I take the measurement from the finished floor, which in this case is the wood floor in the dining room and I'll measure up to the top of the opening there, and we got 81 and a quarter. So now, this is where it gets a little tricky, because you're gonna have these jam legs underneath the three quarter inch material of the header here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the quarter inch, but then also the three quarters of an inch. So that's one full inch. So if we have 81 and a quarter, I think I said 81 and a quarter, of the measurement from top to bottom, then you want to subtract a full inch and make it 80 and a quarter when you cut these. And that will give you the exact measurement you need to have a quarter inch reveal all the way around the opening. Now that that's all said and done, easy measurements, once you put the shims in, all you have to do is, I like to score them from the back like this, even though there's going to be casing, um, molding, covering this whole thing. So if you wanted to, you could score them from both sides. But if I screw them from the back here, just like this, a couple of times, then you can just take a hammer or your hand and snap them right off and you get them out of your way. And then they're nice and flush inside of that casing. All right, so now let's move over to the actual jam casing I made for that one. And I'll show you how I install it and then we'll tackle the moldings. Okay, so now you really don't have to do this with the uh, white trim boards on the inside. You could leave the sheetrock and cheat a little bit and then you can just have your reveal here, which I'm gonna go over in a little bit. You can wrap your casing moldings around your doorways and leave the sheetrock inside painted white. Me personally, I don't like the way it looks because the sheetrock is never flat. There's always bulging screws coming out of there. There's always uh, you know, brush strokes from the paint and the, the corner beads, uh, a lot of times the paint will wear off on those corner beads. So that's why I like to eliminate that and have those solid trim boards. It looks really nice and tight. What I like to do is I like to put the casing together with a couple of brad nails, uh, one and a half inch brad nails, just to tack it together and then put screws through the top so that it's all one unit, just like this, so that when you stand it up, it actually looks like it's already a door casing. It just makes things a lot easier to slide everything in. 
Another thing that I want to mention before we go any further is these are one by sixes, but the door openings are not five and a half inches. Uh, when you get a one by six, it's five and a half inches wide. The door openings are actually in this house are four and 13 16 inches. So I had to rip these down to four and 13 16 so that they would be completely flush with the edges of the door jam opening. So then you just take your door jam, slide it into place here like this. And you got to keep everything basically flush with the sheetrock. And you want to make sure that you center your, your jam to keep that quarter inch away from all sides. Now you can see here that it's moving a little bit. And that's because I need to put the shims in there. So let me get a better camera angle so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I have the jam in place. I have my levels here with me. And... A couple of shims. I'm just going to put a couple of shims inside my tool pouch right there. I have my 15 gauge finish nail because the 15 gauge is a much heavier nail. It has a much more holding power than a brad nail. Um, if you, I like to use that for jams. Uh, when I get to the molding and trim, uh, I'll use the 18 gauge on the trim in the thinner portions here. And sometimes if it's really thick, I'll use the 15 gauge on the outer portion. So we're gonna go over all that once we get this installed. So the first thing I like to do is I have it in the opening and you can see that it needs to be moved back and forth to make this thing uh, perfect. So what I'm gonna do is put the level on the header like this, the header jam, and I'm gonna move it over. And as I move it over, I'll get the level bubble perfectly in place. And I'll try to keep it in line with the sheetrock. And as I move it, that's how we get it perfect. And so what I want to do is I want to make sure that I get this uh, roughly a quarter inch on both sides and keep it flush with the sheetrock. So what I'll do is just to get it kind of in place, I'll jam some, some shims in here. This right here will just give me a little bit of, of a hold. You're going to get one side in at a time so that you can move it around. So now what I'll do is I'll just shoot the nail right through the shim over here on this side. And now I have it flush and I don't have to worry about it moving too much on it. So now I'll come to this side and what I'll start to do is level off my head. Now you want to make sure that you're nailing through a shim because if you don't, the power of the gun will actually squeeze the wood up and it will bend it. And you don't want any bending or bowing in there. And now just take a feel, make sure that you're good on both sides, and we are. And so now I know I have to get this side leveled up. So now I can see that I'm leveled across. Make sure that I'm flush. Now I'm going to come back from the other side and slip a shim through the other way so that I can nail it off once I get these all done. So now the next thing we're going to have to do is plumb up these sides right here. Now you can see the difference in height there because this header right here is not perfectly low, but this now is. So we'll continue to plumb up the sides and we'll use the same method with the shims. Take your level. For those of you that don't know, if you're watching this video, some of you probably don't know, this across, when you put a level across this way, that's level. When you put it this way, straight up and down, that's plumb. So right now we want to check plumb. And right now where we are is actually perfectly plumb. And so we need to maintain that. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to just put a shim in right there. I'm going to make sure that I'm flush, I'm keeping my Level on there, that's plumb. I'll shoot one in right there. And we're going to just do this moving down the board because we'll plumb up here, but you can see where the sheetrock comes out over there. We'll check it down here, and we're perfect. So now you know why I leave the quarter inch of the, the room there is because this is so out of plumb coming down this way that I'm actually touching here and I'm at least a quarter inch or more up at, at the top. And perfectly plumb. So now what I'll do is stick a shim here on the bottom. It's 
straight, just like that. And then I like to go back to the middle because you see this right here. We want to make sure that we have a shim inside there, not only to keep the integrity of this being plumb, but we also don't want it to bow into the wall. So bring that in just like that. And I'm gonna go about halfway like that right there. Check it again, and we are dead on right there. So now I know I can shoot that. Okay, and now at the bottom, I just have to make sure, since I'm right up against the sheetrock, all I have to do is move it out to make sure that I'm flush with the sheetrock, just like that, and then shoot it in on the bottom here. And now we know we're perfect. So now I'll do the same thing to this side. So now I'm trying to get you a better angle here. I'll grab a couple of shims, stick them in the pouch. Okay, so we're, we're good on top. And now, so you can see here, flush with the sheetrock, I have shims going through both sides. I can just nail that off. On top here, I have the other piece keeping it stable. Over here on the other side, and on the other side here, I need to put a shim through the back because I need to make sure that it stays completely sandwiched and it doesn't cave in when I nail it off. So I'll put a shim through the other side. On the top and the bottom, go like this, stick the shin in there, make sure that's perfectly flat, nail it off. Then of course you'll come back later with wood filler, fill all these nail holes after the trim is done. So this is just a view from the other side here, I'm going to take the shim and I'm gonna work it right in against the other shim and take up the space there so it doesn't cave in when I nail it off. Okay, so I'm gonna use my combination square set at a quarter of an inch. And what I'll do is Butt that up against the inside of the casing here because you need reference marks to measure off of and also these quarter inch reveals will give you a nice look, finished look on the molding. You don't want the molding to go right to the edge. You want the molding to sit a quarter of an inch off of the actual um, door jam material. That gives you what's called a reveal. So now, I'm just gonna mark off as far as I can, get out of the way. There's my quarter inch right there, quarter inch mark right there, quarter inch right here. And also as I nail in the casing after I cut it, I can keep it on these reference lines and that's going to give me the true quarter inch. And also it's going to give me the area where I need to measure for the point of my inside miter right there at each one of the corners. And I'll just go along here and I'll put some reference lines on the top. And the other side right here, flip the combination square around. Make a mark right there. Make a mark right here, just like that. Just go around and make a couple of these marks this way you can keep your casing in the spot that you want it all the way down. Okay, now I'm gonna actually start to get into cutting the trim. And so we have our reference mark there. It's gonna take our tape. We're gonna measure from the finished floor 
right up to that point. 80 and 9 sixteenths. What you can do is you can write right here, it's going to be covered up anyway, or right here on the wall, you can write 80 and 9 sixteenths. Just going to double check and verify that I have 80 and 9 sixteenths on this side. Now remember, uh, we're going to pre-assemble this after we cut everything on the nose, 80 and 9 sixteenths. Okay, so now if you're not comfortable measuring this by putting your tape on that point and then running it over here because it's, it's actually pretty long uh, run and you can't really actually see it perfectly, just measure as if you were measuring between two walls. Take your tape, put it on the point where you want it, which is right there. Bring it to a measurement that's, you know, an even number. That makes it much easier. I'm going to mark it at 40. So I'll put my finger on the tape right there. I'll make sure I'm within my tolerance. Right there, I am on my point. Bring it to 40. Make a mark there and then write 40 at the top. Now come to this side. Bring it right to the spot where you want it to be, inside there. Look at your 40 mark, and I have 30 and 3 sixteenths. So that's gonna be 70 and 3 sixteenths is gonna be my measurement for the top piece. I'm fortunate to have the Festool stand that can support long pieces, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this all the way out, and I'm gonna square up one edge, measure off that edge, and then come out to the 80 and 9 sixteenths, make a mark, and then I'm going to cut my miter there. So first thing I'm going to do is bring it all the way to the edge. Now, if you don't have a stand that can support long pieces like this, I just uploaded a short that shows you how to uh, mark off, give yourself a little extra, make the cut, flip the board over, and then trim it. And you won't have to have all 16 feet hanging off of you know your little saw if you don't have any kind of support links. Okay, so I realize that not everybody has access to a stand like this with stop blocks and you know pieces that they can cut that long repetitively. So what I'm gonna do is show you an easy way to do it if you don't have a system like this. You can square off one edge, then you can slide the piece down. So I'm gonna pull the tape from the square edge. I'm gonna go ahead and mark the inside of my miter, which is the short point. Make a mark right here. And now what I'm gonna do is Make my first cut, 45. So now, what I'll do, take this, I'm gonna put it on the workbench. I'll show you why in just one second. This piece is too short, so we'll move away. And now, I'm gonna move up to the next piece here. And what I'm gonna do on this piece, is I need the opposite miter. So I'm going to cut that to 45. Once you have your miters cut, this is the piece that I need to trim, and this is the piece that I already cut to the length. So now I want to take the two miters and I want to butt them up against each other right here, back to back, just like this, and I want the points to touch. So I'm going to bring the points together like this. And so what I'm going to do is make sure that I have these perfect at the end here like this, right there. You can even take a piece of wood, put it across there and butt them up against each other. Come down to this end right here, make sure that they're butted up against each other. And then I'm just going to take my pencil and mark off the bottom right there. And that's where I need to cut it off straight. Bring this over to the saw, make a straight cut, and both will be the same size. Okay, so now I need to cut my top piece. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a 45 on this side. Now remember, we're measuring from inside miters, the short point to the short point. 
trick for that because you can't really hook your tape on the inside of a lighter. Now I need 70 and 3 16 When you have an inside miter like this, you really can't hook your tape on it. So what you can do, there's two things you can do. On my particular saw, I have the extension wings here, right? If you don't have the extension wings, you can bring it to the inside plate here, and you can put your inside miter mark right there, and then hook your tape, and then you can measure down. I'm going to bring it down to the end over there so I have a lot of support on my stand. I'm going to line it up right here, right at the edge. And so now I'm going to hook my tape on my stand. Run it down here. 70 and 3 sixteenths is right there. Bring this right here. Over to 45. Okay, so I said we're going to pre-assemble the miter casing before we put it up there. I'm going to be using these cam clamps. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. These things are great, but they are expensive as hell. I'll link them in the description, but um, most likely most of you are not going to be using these, uh, especially for the fact that most of you don't do this for a living. If you do, then you will be buying a lot of these because they are great and they work for gluing these together and it makes installing trim a hell of a lot easier. But it can also slow you down if you don't have enough because you'll be waiting for the glue to dry. So in that case, I'm also using Tight Bond Quick and Thick because it cures out much quicker than any of the regular glue. And it is a lot stronger because it is thicker. Uh, so I'm gonna apply the glue to both sides of the casing. And I'm doing this on melamine. I have these scrap pieces of melamine, and if you're not familiar with melamine at all, it's a great surface to glue up on because the glue does not stick to the melamine. So I'm not gonna have to worry about any squeeze out at the back of the casing. And I'll just have to worry about the glue squeeze out in the front of the casing. And for that, I have a damp rag ready to wipe all of that off. So you got a couple of minutes to work with the with the type on quick and thick. Just brush everything out. We don't want to put so much where it's so thick that it doesn't allow you to close the miter completely perfectly. But the clamps will definitely, definitely help with that. So I'm just gonna wipe off a little bit of excess that I have. You don't have to put that much. And now you will see the casing come together with this clamp and it will close up perfectly. So I'm gonna get my casing perfect in the corners. I'm gonna verify that I have it exactly where I want it. I'm gonna move some of the glue out of the way because I want the corners there to be perfect. Because you have to make sure that you work the casing so that the miter is perfect for the clamps. The clamps are not going to do it for you, but what they're going to do, and the way they work is they, they just clamp in like this. So I'm going gonna, gonna to butt it up against here, just like this. Try to clamp. Obviously my hand's in the way. Now you can see those little teeth starting to bite into the casing. Make sure I didn't move. Crank it. And that's it. Wipe off the excess glue before it starts to set on there. And you can see that I have perfect pressure on this miter all the way to the inside toe right here and the outside toe, everything is completely perfect. A little bit in that corner right there. And here's a little trick too. If you have a little bit on the inside and you can't get it out, take a screwdriver and get in that corner and wipe it out with the screwdriver and the damp rig. Get it all up so that you don't have any cleanup to do later on. So 
while I have this setting up in the clamps, it takes a minimum of 15 minutes with the tight bond quick and thick before you can actually handle it. You can't stress the joint for a, at least a day, but if you let it set for a half an hour, then you can actually work this onto the door casing, nail it off, and it will hold. So I've done it before, plenty of times. Quick and thick is really good especially when you apply that much pressure from those clamps like that. Now, some carpenters will, and I've done it in the past myself before I've had these clamps, I would scissor nail the joints. I still may do that after I take the clamps off to put it on the wall to give me a little bit of extra holding power and really keep those joints tight as I move. But what I'm gonna do now is mark off my reveal on this door and cut those casings so that I can let that set up while I cut everything else and then by the time I'm ready to put these in the clamps, I'll clamp those up, I'll come back to this casing, throw it up on the wall, and we'll be done. Now it's been about a half an hour, and I've taken the moldings out of the clamps, and I'm just gonna uh, stitch nail with the brad nailer into the corners here. Now you really don't have to do this, but since I'm lifting this by myself, and this is a rather wide piece, I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of added security there. Now obviously this is much easier with two people on a large casing like this, but you don't always have someone to work with. So you gotta do it yourself. So the first thing I want to do is line up the corner there, hold it in place, come over to this corner, and I'm gonna see it right on my marks. I got perfect reveal all the way around. It's exactly where I want to be. I'm going to leave that place there for a second, it shouldn't fall. What I'm going to do is, because the bottom is not that thick over here where I'm going to nail into the casing, I'm going to be using a brad nailer. Then, this casing is actually thicker over here. I'm going to switch to the two inch nails and I'm going to shoot the two inch through there into the actual framing of the wall here. You have two by fours in there. Alright, get tacked it over there. Now, tack it right here. Okay, that one held in place. And now I can start to fiddle with it and move it around and get it on my marks for my reveal. So I got my reveal mark right there. down to the bottom and now you can see sometimes you gotta you gotta move it around to get it perfect. Okay. Now every maybe every six inches or so stamp it in. Okay. Now we'll do this side, and you can see we're off the mark here because we had to move it around and by ourselves, so all I need to do is just move it over right to my reveal line, which is right there. jam what we're going to do is switch over to the two inch nails and then we're going to shoot it through into the framing now for this I'm actually going to switch guns and go back to the two and a half inch nails on my 15 gauge because this is a thick casing so we want a lot of holding power on this one so what I'm going to do is shoot it in an inconspicuous spot if I can okay So that's going right into the two by four studs that are actually behind. You 
notice what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to nail it in right on the line here so that when I fill it, it blends right in with the actual uh, crease of the molding. Okay, and there is your case open. So let's get a really quick look here. This is the casing. It's nice and tight to the floor. It's a really nice profile. Here's your miters. Nice reveal, quarter inch all the way. You could do 3 16 reveal if you want also. Doesn't always have to be quarter inch. You see how that really complements the ceiling. It really just fits perfect with the carpet ceiling. And there's one of the foremen right there. The other foreman's inside, she's afraid of the compressor and the nail gun. This is a look at the carpet ceiling. You know, it's a little bright with the uh, chandelier there. I just put that chandelier up, got rid of that one that they had. And next, I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna uh, film it because it's the same, but I'm gonna be doing the casing uh, around the window. That's exactly the same as this casing right here. And it's gonna be just mitered in all four corners all the way around. Principles are the same. I just marked the locations in the corner with the reveal. And I'll measure down from each one of those and I'll miter it around just like a big picture frame, pre-assemble everything. Okay guys, so here it is, fast forward a little bit. And I filled all the nail holes, touched up the paint all around the casing. So you can see that that's all done. Got a bit of uh, heavy sun glare coming in over there. So I'll try to turn this way. Got the moldings up all around. Everything's all painted up nice. Ceiling's all done. Got my old chandelier, my old dining room set in here now. I uh, put in the baseboard, did that off camera. I have plenty of more rooms to do with baseboard. So I will be taking you guys along for that and showing you guys the way I do uh, baseboard moldings, tips, tricks, all that stuff. Uh, I did the window casing off camera. It's the same way uh, that I did the casing for the doors everything glued up with the clamps and you can see in the background over here i actually have another window casing all glued up ready to go and floors are all done this room is ready to go another room down you probably saw the photos on instagram okay guys well that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you got something out of it i hope you guys learned how to pre-assemble the casing and install the casing and also uh, if you don't have the door jam material in there which is just three quarter inch pre-primed pine if you, if you have moldings already and you have to take them off and you're redoing them you most likely already have uh solid wood casings in there so if you don't, like I said, you can cheat with using the sheetrock painted white. It just doesn't look as good. So uh, if you have a small door opening, then, uh, then don't do it because then you're going to make it even tighter. Uh, but if you have an opening like I have here, this is a large opening and that is, uh, that's actually a 40 inch wide door. So the standards usually the, on the wide ones are 36. That's, that's even wider. So uh, I wasn't worried about doing it there and putting the jam in and losing an inch and a half because it's still at that point that, you know, 38 and a half inches so it's still an oversized door by an inch and a half all right guys so make sure you hit the subscribe button hit the picture of a notification bell it's going to notify you every time i upload a new video and also look in the description box below that's going to have a link to the tools that i use all right guys i'll see you next time